So, hi there. Um, can you introduce yourselves? Uh, okay, I'll start. Uh, my name is Chidam Ur, and uh, I work in a private school in uh, Izmir, Turkey. I teach grade 8 with my partner, Karen. Yes, and I'm Karen Treshin. I work at the same school. Uh, did, you call, did you say what it was called? It's no. called SEV, and uh, it's a K-8 primary school, and we teach the grade 8 level. Uh, and we have recently started using cell phones in our teaching. Ah, excellent. So that's, uh, <laughs> that takes away my next question. Uh, you did a brilliant presentation, I have to say, on Thank using you. cell phones uh, with your students. Can you uh, give us um, just a, a snippet of what you did with your students? Okay, I'll start. Yeah, yeah. because I'll okay. sort of summarize the first part of the presentation. What I did was I explained that we... Um, when we decided to start using cell phones with the kids, the first step was to get parental approval and also to get permission from our, uh, the administration of our school. Because normally it is forbidden, it's even forbidden for the kids to bring cell phones to school and they're not allowed to have them in their lockers or in their pockets or anything. So we had to get approval. And uh, we went about that uh, by inviting everybody to a meeting. We discussed pros and cons. We came up with a um, acceptable use policy for the school that we all signed and decided to use for the future. And then we sent a letter home where we explained what we wanted to do, what the project would entail. Uh, and we got permission from the parents to use the cell phones, to post whatever they created uh, online. Um, and then we started and we wanted to sort of explore the use of cell phones with kids and, and we were new at it and, and Brand new. excited but of course ignorant as to how this was going to happen. So we decided to split it up into two different sections and I'll explain the first bit and then Chidam will explain the second, the second one. Uh, the first uh, part was to simply use the phones to replace cameras, video cameras, sound recorders, and only use them to collect data. And uh, to test that out, we um, grouped the kids, and we took them in, in groups of three, and they each had one, each group had one cell phone. And then we, we took them to the zoo, and we had them videotape themselves speaking, we had them take pictures of animals, we had them take pictures of signs, uh, posters around the zoo with grammatical mistakes in them or other mistakes because that happens in mistakes. Turkey. And um, we decided to allow each group of three kids only one phone uh, for uh, several different reasons. One was to avoid that they, the phones were used for anything but the educational work. Uh, we didn't want them to access Facebook from the zoo. We didn't want them to do uh, you know, other things with the phones. So they had a set of tasks, they had a, a, a specific amount of time, and they had one phone. And so uh, they did that. There wasn't a problem uh, at all throughout the field trip. Mm -hmm. And then we instructed them to go home, upload all the pictures to Facebook. They're 13 and above, so there wasn't a problem with that either and upload their videos to YouTube. And then the next day, they came back and we brought them to the lab where we had each group create a web page using doodlekit.com. It's a free uh, web page creator, uh, Web 202. And then um, they simply followed instructions. They put their videos there, their photos, they created albums, mm -hmm. they used some different Web 2.0 tools to make really nice web pages. And we demonstrated those today. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that was the first part of the project. I have to say, they, they were really nice web pages that your <laughs> students made as well, really nice. Thank you. Thank and the second part was? And the second part was where we decided to use uh, the smart abilities of our phones, because in the first part we di really didn't use the phones as smartphones. Any cell phone could uh, record voice or take photographs or, you know, videotape. Uh, but this time we wanted them to be able to uh, use the web pages and, you know, use some applications. Uh, so uh, to do this, plus in addition to uh, using the smart abilities, we also wanted to use all aspects of the language teaching, like uh, we wanted to include reading and writing and speaking and listening and grammar into activities. Uh, and we didn't want to spend many, many lessons on this. Uh, so what we came up with was uh, of 80 minute block lesson divided into six different stations where uh, one aspect of language 
teaching was used in each station. Uh, we had a station for listening, for writing, for speaking, uh, for uh, reading, one for dictionaries, uh, and one for grammar games, and one was a treasure hunt, which they really liked. Um, would you like me to go on and explain each station? I think I'll, I'll link to your video just because it was a 30-minute yes. presentation. Yes. <laughs> it's a long, it's Can a you long. give us just like a, a rough idea, like a, a condensed idea of the things that went well with this and the things that didn't go so well? Well, the kids loved it. That was the, the first and most important thing. They loved it. They were really engaged and motivated. And uh, even tasks that would normally not excite them such as filling in blanks or uh, using a dictionary, mm -hmm. really did excite them. And every time we would blow a whistle after every, you know, every station was supposed to be only 12 minutes long, and they would run to their station, immediately read the instructions, get on the phones, and then when we would blow the whistle, they would all go, ah, and then run to the next. <laughs> really, really good. And really good. Two stations really helped with uh, oh. different levels of language uh, with the kids. You know, there, there are higher achievers and lower achievers, but there was something to do for each kid. Uh, so so they really enjoyed that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And I uh, presume there must have been some downsides, some negative sides to it? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Maybe not? Yes. Of course. Uh -huh. I'm Let's admit it, dear. Yes. <laughs> I mean, whenever you try something for the first time, of course, there are some downfalls and there are uh, things you have to overcome, and uh, we had our share of those. Mm -hmm. uh, for one thing, every child, uh, this was a bring your own device thing, so every child doesn't have the same brand of phone, they don't have the same uh, level, uh, the same type of phone, and you know, they, some are older models, some are newer models, so they didn't all uh, use the same application to the same extent, some were slower, uh, so that's one thing, but we can't really overcome that, so we have to find a way around that. We actually did. Mm -hmm. What we did was, uh, we have two different types of phones between the two of us. Karen has an Android, I have an iPhone. So whenever one uh, phone failed in one area, we lended them our phones to compensate for that. Uh, and anything else, Karen? Yeah, we're hoping that perhaps now that, that we will be able to impress our administrators with this project, they may agree to uh, buy maybe five phones that we can use as stand-in phones. Yeah, we, we are hoping Negative to things, a, uh, technical problems, battery life, mm -hmm. um, the Wi-Fi connection. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but they were small things and small. they were easily overcome. Yeah. It didn't disturb the learning, it didn't stop the project, it mm -hmm. didn't inconvenience them too much. Did it take you a long time to, to plan this lesson? I mean, it, 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 there was so much that you did, brilliant mm -hmm. stuff. It, it must have taken you ages to plan it. Not ages. Not ages. But it took we some have time. To admit that it took some time. Yeah. But in, any time you do something new for the first time, it takes you some time to plan it. Mm -hmm. But then you know, now that we've planned this once, next year it's going to be adding a little, tweaking it here and there to mm -hmm. fit the group and to fit our curriculum at the time we want to use this project. Mm -hmm. But the basis of it is all ready. So mm -hmm. you know, yes, you work once, but it's the same thing even if you're uh, producing a simple worksheet. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to work hard. You have to to work maybe an hour to prepare a worksheet that's going to take the kids to solve in 15 minutes, mm. but then the next year you, you use, use it again, it again and again. So, we're so happy you know, yeah. over time it actually is going to save us time. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we you often have to think about classroom management with teenagers, and I remember that was one of our uh, administrators' uh, comments was that you don't have to think about classroom management; they're all on task. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we didn't have to think of that. So. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah, I really agree that it's important with technology to have reusable lessons, so uh, good point, thank you. Uh, final thing, uh, a brief message for other teachers thinking of using mobiles with their students. Have you got any ideas, suggestions? Go for it. Now. You know, watch the video. That watch the video because our <laughs> kids have a lot to tell you. Yeah. So watch the video and see how the kids feel. I'm sure that will inspire yeah. you to do your own project. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.